Well, if you were missing the Manchester clubs in the Premier League last weekend, your wait is over. They'll be back in action this weekend. Rob Dawson is joining me as we look ahead to Man United's matchup against Crystal Palace. But before we get into those specifics, Rob, let's talk about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You just came out of his press conference where he was actually quite critical, I think, of the FA's handling of Mason Greenwood and the whole saga that we know we saw over the last two weeks. Um, what did he have to say there? Well, yeah, I mean, he was. He, he was you know, quite explosive, really, by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's standards. He's, he's not someone that always um, decides to speak out like that in press conferences, but obviously decided to this morning. Um, his main gripe is that the FA hadn't handled Mason Greenwood particularly well. Um, you know, the, important, it's important to say that, that there's no one at Man United who's saying that Mason Greenwood didn't make a mistake while he was on England duty. I think that's a given. Everyone can see that. But what Ollie is saying is that um, he probably shouldn't have been called up in the first place. Um, he asked the FA... He asked Gareth Southgate to leave him out to, to let Mason Greenwood have a break after such a tough season that lasted more than a year. The FA obviously decided not to. They picked him. Not only that, they picked him and then put him up for a press conference straight away on, on his second day, I think, with, with England. Something else that has annoyed Solskjaer. Um, and I, th I can see his point, to be honest. Yeah, you know, it's, it was a breakthrough season for Mason Greenwood. He's only a young boy. He played 49 games, I think, last season. I played an awful lot after the lockdown. And 20 days after his season's finished with Man United, He's back playing for England again. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has, has worked hard to protect him, to manage him and, and look after him. And he feels that that hard work has been thrown away a little bit by the way that England have, have handled him. Um, again, though, you know, that's, it's, it's not to take away from the fact that Mason Greenwood has made a mistake and will have to learn from that. I just think that Ollie would hopes that in the future, England and Gareth Southgate will look after him a bit more um, going forward. All right, well, they're going to have to put all that aside, at least for this weekend, where they're filing some Premier League action up against Crystal Palace. A number of stories going into this one. Um, I almost don't even know where to start, but let me start, you know, with a new signing, Donny van der Beek, because we all like shiny new things. What's the likelihood of him playing or probably even starting? Yeah, I think there's a good chance of him, of him starting. I think he'll definitely be involved at some stage if he doesn't start. Um, by all accounts, he played well in that. Um, warm-up game against Aston Villa last weekend. So, um, you know, as far as we know, he's, he's raring and ready to go. I think the interesting thing about Saturday against Crystal Palace is, is how it sets up. Um, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got three very, very good creative midfielders now in Paul Pogba, Bruno Fernandes and Donny van der Beek. And the question that all the fans are asking is, is can all three play together? You know, there the, are debates and questions about whether they are capable of all playing together. You know, there's not a particularly defensive-minded midfielder among those three. There are others in the squad like Nemanja Matic, Scott McTominay, Fred, who can fill that role. But really, we're waiting to see whether Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to play all three of those, those really good attacking players together. Um, and Saturday, obviously, against Crystal Palace is, is the first opportunity. And while he can play all three attacking players together, he can't play three goalkeepers. And we know that United still have three really good goalkeepers because I rate Sergio Romero quite a bit. We know the struggles that David De Gea has had in the last two seasons or so. But the big point is that Dean Henderson is back at Old Trafford. So what does Ole do for this one? Does he give the nod to Dean as so many people have been crying for? Or do you stick with David De Gea? Yeah, I mean, again, you know, like the midfield, that is the big question about what happens in goal. Um, he's got three very, very good goalkeepers, international quality goalkeepers there, and obviously only one can play every week. Um, it won't be Sergio Romero this weekend. He's not back at United yet. He's, he's been given a little bit more time off. But there is a, a straight fight, um, apparently, between Dean Henderson and David De Gea. Um, you know, Dean Henderson has come off a, a very, very impressive loan spell at Sheffield United, got himself in the England squad. He's not come back to Manchester United to sit on the bench. Um, David De Gea has been used to being the number one for, for nearly 10 years at United now. He's Spain's number one. Again, someone who doesn't want to sit on the bench. So they're both competing. As far as we know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will let them fight it out and pick who's ever best equipped for the job. Um, and it will be fascinating because, you know, if David De Gea hits against Crystal Palace, it opens up the, the possibility that Dean then might have to go to Ole and say, well, I don't want to sit on the bench. I want to play for England next summer in the Euros. I need to go back out on loan. Um, and that would mean having to bring Romero back into the, into the squad as the number two. At the moment, Romero is looking for a move because he wants to play more. He doesn't want to be there as a number three. You know, the whole dynamic around those goalkeepers is, is fascinating. And, and Saturday against Crystal Palace is the first time we'll see really where, where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's head is in terms of who his number one is. And then you probably know or have interacted with David De Gea a lot more than I have for sure. So um, some would say that, like you said, he has been United's number one for almost a decade now. So it... it, it He's comfortable. He's been comfortable in that position. Now with the added competition of Dean Henderson and the kind of, you know, 
well, potential that comes with him. Do you feel like this could be a wake up call for De Gea that he might need and he could probably use it to the good? Yeah, I mean, with, with, with every situation like that, there are two ways of looking at it. Either David De Gea can be unhappy that Dean Henderson's come back to challenge him, or he can think, well, you know, I'm still a better goalkeeper. I'm going to work even harder and I'm going to prove to the manager that I deserve to play every week. And that can only help him improve as a goalkeeper. You know, it's fans will have known that over the last two years, David De Gea's performances, the consistency that we've seen from him has slipped a little bit. He, he's, he has made him more, more mistakes, more critical mistakes that have led to goals in a way that maybe three or four years ago when he was winning player of the year every, every year, he wasn't doing. Um, so if, if this situation gets the best out of David De Gea, then it's, it's a positive thing. And, and what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will say is that it's his job to create competition in every single position. You know, he wants a squad where everyone is fighting for a place every week because that's the kind of environment he wants to create. And so his decision is to bring two, well, three world-class goalkeepers together at one club and say, you know what, you all battle it out and let's see who's number one. And hopefully all three of those goalkeepers will take the challenge on the chin and decide to work harder and prove to the manager who just, who's to, the, the best and who, who deserves to play every week. And, you know, in terms of United as a whole in the team, that can only help them. And then finally, this match against Crystal Palace now. Um, as I said, on paper, it looks like United should definitely handle it and come away with a win. What are you expecting? Yeah, I, mean, I would expect United to win. Obviously, it has been a difficult summer. Players aren't, aren't that well rested. There perhaps hasn't been the, the number of new faces coming as, as we'd expect at this stage. Um, you know, Crystal Palace won at Old Trafford last season, so it, it will be a difficult game. Um, Wilfred Zaha you know, is one of the best players in the league, someone who can win a game on his own that, you know, He'll have to be watched very closely. But you know, if United have got genuine ambitions of closing the gap with City and Liverpool this season, Crystal Palace at home is really a game that they have to win. Um, and that probably will be the message that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is telling them. You know, he wants to see more consistency. He wants to cut out results like Palace winning at Old Trafford last season. That's exactly the kind of result that they can't, they can't um, contemplate this season. They have to get rid of those kind of days where they just... They aren't at it. Um, and, you know, first game of the season is a tough one, but it's, it's a great chance to show how far United have come um, and whether they are capable of, of putting that consistency together. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.